Amen. Yeah. By the special grace of God, we are going to add uh, a testimony today, a powerful testimony today. Today we shall be talking about we shall be talking about uh, my encounter with the spirit of death. My silent your phone, please. Silent your your phone and computer. I'm talking about the Zoom people, people who are in Zoom. Silent your phone and uh, silent your phone on your computer, please. Those who are in Zoom to silent their phone and computer, please do that. If you are in Zoom, silent your phone. Praise the Lord. Today, I'm going to tell you my encounter with the spirit of death. My encounter with the spirit of death. I, I know many of you have watched it on YouTube. But there are points and areas I want to point in, which you might not know at all. There are some areas and points I wanted to talk about, which you, you might not know at all. So please, I want to, to please open your Bible to, open your Bible, to uh, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Verse 23. I will read from here. For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. With my account, with my testimony and my interview with evangelist, I will see. I was able to interpret and tell the people about uh, my, my, uh, my death. How I died. I eventually died and uh, I was uh, taken back to hell. How God saved me from the spirit of death. In this moment I was talking about, there's one thing I want you to note. Is that, number one, when I died, I just finished a prayer with my memories. We just do just finish a nine VD prayer. I mean, if I'm talking about nine VD prayer, I do used to be the prayer that is weak. I do used to use, I do used to do a prayer that is weak. So I want you to understand what I mean by saying nine VD prayer. You know, when I'm going to leave the prayer, it's going to be a prayer that is going to be a hot prayer. So, as we were, as I finished that leading of prayer, we wrestled against every forces of darkness. Then I decided to go back and lay my head where I used to sleep. 
in my thought. And suddenly, something happened, which I want everybody that is looking at me right now to take note of what is happening. Something happened immediately. I leave my air to rest. Number one thing that happened is that after the finish of prayers, you know what number one thing is? If you pray, probably your life will be holy. Why I say so? Because you will have asked for forgiveness of sin. Your way will have been right before God. Even though you are committing little, little sin. I'm talking about then, not now again by God's grace. I don't like to do anything. I don't like to fall into sin anymore. But I'm talking about then. So things will have been, uh, uh, things will have been at least, at least this will have been perfectly when you are pleading prayers. So I went to sleep. Not quite long when I slay my head to sleep. Something different happened to me. Very different. I just see, I, I, I have not sleep at all. I was just lying down. I was just lying my head. Just lying my head. So I've not slept so deep. Just lying my head. When I see the spirit of death came, I just, I just opened my eyes in the spirit and I saw the spirit of death standing before me. As a spirit of death stand before me, my brother, my sister. That spirit, number one thing that I notice is that fear grip my heart. I feel fear. One of the things I saw in the life of uh, death, I mean in death, in the presence of death is that whenever he comes, fear will always follow him. He walk with fears. Assuming there are people who can be bold enough to be bold enough to confront the spirit of death, probably they might not die. I'm just taking it to myself. In every situation in life, when you become to fear, when you become to come fear and fear grip your heart, I cannot lie to you. There's no way you can overcome it. There's no way. You can't overcome it. That's the truth. You can't overcome it. So the best thing you have to do is to be bold enough to confront the spirit of death to be bold enough to confront the spirit of death. If you are bold enough to confront the spirit of death, I'm not lying to you. The spirit of death himself might probably leave you immediately if you confront him. So after, after my, I saw him, he said something to me. He said, I am the spirit of death. I have come to take you. When he said that, there's one thing that I notice when he said that. When he said, I've come to take you. There's one thing I notice when he says so. One, when he said that my spirit came out of my body and stood before the, that spirit of death. Without even forcing me at all, my spirit came out of my body and stand before that spirit of death. One, I see that the spirit of death has authority over every life. I want to come deep into this part so that you can understand me well. He has authority over every life. But there's something I'm going to show to you today that will make you to understand something more deeper. The spirit of death has authority over many lives. So when he says so, 
I noticed he was standing, he was wearing black from from her hair, from his hair to his toe, his black. The clothes he was wearing was so black and deep black. If I'm talking about black, I'm talking about powerful black, deep black, more than you have ever taken. Black one. There's no kind of black that is black than that on head. That black was so deep. Then I look at his face. His face, I thought his face is a woman being. His face is not like a human being, though he has the shape like a human being. But when you look at it, there's no eyes in there, there's no nose, there's no mouth, it's just empty. It's like he cover, listen to me very well. He covers his head with a black hair, uh, with a black, oh my God, with a black this thing. He cover his head. With a black, uh, this is a, a black, it's as if they are wearing a uh, 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 pyjamas, you know. I mean, I mean, uh, this uh, clue that used to uh, cover somebody just like that. Let me see, just like that. That is how he wear it. He cover himself with that clue with his body. So there is a shape of face in his, uh, in his, in his eyes. There's a shape of face. So I try my best to look at that eye. I try my best to look at that eye. But what I notice is that when I look, I see it, there is no face in there. What I could see is just uh is just uh uh a empty. When you look at the eyes, you'll be seeing hellfire straight away. There's nothing like it. you'll be see when you look at the eyes of the spirit of death, you'll be seeing hellfire. You'll be seeing the eternity, the journey to eternity. You'll be seeing journey to hell. That's what you will see in the face of, of uh of uh this uh this the spirit of death. You'll be seeing eternity, eternity. You'll be seeing eternity in his face, in his eyes. So when I, I saw it, fear gripped me more because I was able to see hell straight away. I was able to see eternity. I was able to see suffering of men. I was able to see the things, uh, the, 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 what people are passing through in hell, the agony. I was able to see through the eyes of that, the spirit of death. His eyes alone is enough to kill man. Just his face alone. Is enough to kill somebody. Is enough. He do need to tell you that come and die. When you look at the face alone, you are already a dead man. You looking at the face alone, you are already a dead man. A dead man on your own. You are already a dead man on your own. Just looking at the face. So after I look at the face. It was it was only a high in his hand. That iron was a long iron that he was holding it. So it's after when I came back on earth that the Lord was not telling me that that iron that he was holding was the authority he has that God gave to him. You know, all the spirit of death, the spirit of earth, it is God that created them. It is all created by God. For one assignment or the other. Before there's no spirit of death, until when sin came in. The spirit of death is like a cause. It's not that even like a cause, it's a cause. It is when the, the people of the gar Garden of Eden, when they sin, I mean Adam and Eve, when they sin, they eat that fruit. That spirit of death is already in that fruit. It has not been manifested until somebody eat it. So when he eat it, it will start manifesting. So it is when Adam ate that fruit, he was able to eat that fruit. If you look at the book of uh, Genesis chapter 2, you will see where the Adam ate the fruit. It is when he ate the fruit that the spirit of death was able to come into manifestations. So, automatically, and when God said it, he said to Adam and Eve, he said, do not eat this fruit. Because if you eat it, you shall die. 
is a coarse fruit. But when they eat it, they, they became coarse and they die. Now, it's automatically the spirit of death is called the spirit of cause. So it is God that created them all. But the Bible said in Revelation chapter 20, chapter 20, verses 13, the Bible said that, and the spirit of death and hell, they shall both be cast into lake of fire. If you look at the basic of the chapter 20, verses uh, yeah, 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. The second, this is the second. Day. Now, it means that the spirit of death and hell find himself is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about hell. I will explain to you how hell look like tomorrow. I will explain to you how hell look like. I will go deep into it. How you feel, if how somebody feels if they enter hell. How do you feel for somebody to enter hell? How, what will he feel? What will he say? I will explain it tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will explain it to you. So the Bible said the spirit of death and hell, they will be cast into the lake of fire. Both of them. The boat too. The boat will be there in the lake of fire. So now, listen to me very well. Now listen to me very well. When I stand before the spirit of death, number one thing I notice is that I couldn't remember my family again. I couldn't remember my people again, my member again, my church again, everything I have done for God, I do remember that. So when somebody died, the first thing that will keep it to your mind is that you will not remember anything, anything at all. You will not remember anything. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you will not die. But this is the fact of the whole matter. When the spirit of death now called me out and I stand, that time he called me, the anointing was there. God used to appear to me that time. That grace was there. Eh? That grace was there. The anointing was there. The grace is there. Everything is there. But yet, the spirit of death was able to command me and is ready to kill me. Already, I'm already seeing my dead body on the on, 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 on where I was lying. My dead body was already there. My spirit and soul has already stand. But something happened. I rejected it. But listen to me before I talk about rejecting. What makes Satan must make her the spirit of death to kill somebody? I will tell you today. If you look at the Bible very well, if you look at the Bible very well, Jesus said something, said something to, to, to the disciples, which I want you to, which I want you to note very well. When he was talking to the disciple, he was uh, you know, giving a citation to them, he was talking to them, he get to some point. And Jesus said something. He said for the he said for the he said for the priests of this world comment, and he find nothing in me. I want to look at where he said so. Yeah, he said for the priests of the of this world comment, and he find nothing in me. Nothing in me. I'm coming, please. It's around John chapter, chapter 16. It's around John chapter 16. Yeah. It's around John chapter 16 also. It's where he was talking to uh, 
when he was talking to the disciple, I don't want to go far because of our time. St. John chapter 16, he said something. He said, the priest of this world comment and he find nothing in me. Now, it means that death cannot come and take you without seeing something in you. Listen to me very well. If you look at the book of Romans chapter, three, uh, chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the Bible said, before it said the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Now, and the Bible says something. Jesus said, the prince of this world comment, but he find nothing in me. Another one, you see that? So it means that the spirit of death will not come and kill you if you are not in sin. That is why as a Christian, you have to be very, very, very careful about sin. You have to be extremely careful, powerfully careful. Because if your life as a dot of sin, you are, you are open to the spirit of death. You are open to death. If there is a spirit of sin inside you, it means you are open to the spirit of death. And that is dangerous to your soul. The moment that the spirit of death came to kill me, I was, I just finished the prayer. So don't think that prayer can end that death from killing you. Just like uh, when you ask, uh, when you ask a doctor who is giving you COVID uh, vaccine of COVID-19, and you tell the doctor, sir, he says, sir, uh, please, the, uh, the, the vaccine you are giving to me, so I want to ask you a question. And the person said, ask, the, ask me a question you want to ask. Please ask me. And you now say, uh, please, um, mm, the vaccine you are giving to me, I just want to ask you, uh, after this vaccine, oh, this vaccine will allow me to not to die of COVID-19. The doctor will tell you, this vaccine cannot allow you to die. I mean, we are, that there's nothing like preventing you to die. Is just for protection. Okay, it's okay. The vaccine I collect now cannot open me, cannot open my ear. No need of using nose cover again. It means vaccine COVID 19 cannot enter my body. The doc doctor will just tell you that, ah, uh, no, you see, I have to cover your nose. And you say, yes, sir, okay, 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 okay. Do you mean that I can still contact a COVID, uh, 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 COVID 19? Coronavirus, can I still contact it? The doctor will just tell you, uh, yeah, my brother, my sister, and uh, uh, you can still contact it. Oh. So we are just giving you to protect you. So by the time you look at it very well, you will not see that there is no essence of you using vaccine, of you collecting it. And when you ask the doctor and say that, doctor, please, the vaccine I collect, hope in next in the nearest future, it's not going to injure me. They will answer you and tell you that uh, we don't know maybe it's going to injure you or not. They tell me the essence of you using vaccine. So the same thing. Now, to pray, to pray is very essential. To fast is very important. To study your Bible is very important. But listen to me very well. Open your ear and hear me very well. If you are committing just a little sin, you are open to the spirit of death. You can die. I told you before that. I just finished praying. Some people will want to sleep and they will put the Bible on their head. They will sleep on their head like this. They put a Bible there and do like this. And they will sleep. Listen to me very well. If you like, put 50,000 Bible on your head. Put it like this. This is just a pillow. In fact, remove your bed. 
put all your Bible there. You arrange like uh, hundreds or 200 Bible. You arrange it on, your, on the bed. You not sleep on it and say, hey, I am inside Jesus. My dear sister and my brother, death will come and kill you there if you have sin in your life. It is not about you putting Bible on your head that matters, but about you living a perfect and holy life. If you are waiting for Jesus to come, I can tell you the, the fact and the fact. If Jesus has not come right now, death can come now. I went to go and meet a brother in Nigeria, in this my country, in this my state. His name is called Ayodan Siva. Ayodan Siva. This man is a courtist. But it's not into it. It's not into several courtes. It's not into several courtes. But it's a courtes. Is a, a he called himself one man mobo. So I went to preach the gospel to him. He now said to me, he said, Ah, he said, Pastor, is you know, he's a smoke. He's a he's a he's a you know, he used to smoke. He's a he's a worldly man. I just went to preach. He said, Pastor, I know you now. Don't worry. Very soon, I go join you. I go join you very soon. Don't worry. I too will become a pastor very soon. Do worry, okay? Do worry, okay? I said, yes, sir. But Jesus said, I should warn you that you should give you. Like, he said, don't worry. Very soon. After a week or two weeks, when I preached the gospel to him, I heard that he and his father was having misunderstanding. His father is a guitar student, but he's a very good man. You know all those guitar students that they used to have gone very well. So after we, he was having this thing, uh, I decided, uh, so he, his, I don't know what his father did to him. I don't know at all. I don't know what his father did to him. So he not carried cutlass. He wanted to boost his father, to court his father. So as old as the Babais, the father was running a task greater. He was running a task greater, a task greater because of the son. He didn't want the son to kill him. So he was running and running and running away. So as he was running away, people, people know, they know that whenever Ayo is angry, nobody can come near him. Whenever he's angry, nobody can come near him. If you come near him, he will, he will cut you. So all you could do is to be begging him in the distance. I said, please, please, Ayo, please. This Baba was running away and it was, it was running and running and running. And eventually this Baba entered his own room. He ran and entered his own room. Ayo was holding a cochlea. This man I'm talking about is a sham. He has sham. He has sham. If I'm talking to you, he has sham. Sham. He has personal charms, believing that there's nothing that can happen. If you shoot him, he will not enter. If you caught him, it will not enter. There's not if you stab him, he will not enter. You use uh, this bottle, you you start, stab it on him, it will not enter. He can fight, he can court, he's take very dangerous man. So nothing you can do to him that will enter. And this man was about to cut his father when the father bring gun. I said, Ayo, I will shoot you. Ayo, I will shoot you. And this Ayo do like this. He said, Baba, if you shoot and he enter, I am a bastard. He do like this. If you shoot and it enter, I am a bastard. Baba, shoot. But for me not to, to cut you this, 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 this afternoon, nobody, even if God come down and beg me, I will make sure I cut you. The Baba was warning Ayo. Ayo refused to listen. As the Ayo wanted to cut that Baba like this, as he wanted to cut him like this, the ba Baba wanted to shoot him on the leg. The intention of Baba is to shoot him on the leg. But with the fear of dodging the cutlass, 
he shoot him in the stomach. And Ayo look at himself. You know, Ayo was as he shoot him, he feel not he said he feel like a, nothing is going to enter here. The by looking at the stomach, all his intestine has come out. All, all his intestine have all come out. All his intestine. They have all come out. What am I trying to say? I your lead down and die there. Even though you think you have sham, even though you think that you have Jesus, yes, I'm talking about Jesus, yes. Even though you think you have Jesus, yes, I mean Jesus. If there is a single thing in your life, sin, one sin, I mean just one, a stain in your garment is enough for you to die. It's so enough for you to die. Thus, a single sin is enough. I have blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Blood, it cannot enter. Even though you shed the blood of Jesus in tomorrow, if there is sin in your life, there is sin in your life. The Bible says, I know all clean things. Listen where, no unclean things. We enter heaven. It means when you die, you are going straight to heaven. Uh, uh, uh. I was when the spirit of death came and killed me. I just finished praying. I am a pastor, a holiness pastor, a very prayer warrior man, and yet he successfully killed me. So don't think that that kind of uh, that holiness with that uh, it you are enough. No, listen to me. Jesus said. Jesus said. He said, and eh? listen to what Jesus said. He said, and the priest of the war comment. And he find nothing in me. Was Satan come into your life and was able to see his property in your life? Whether it's ordinary hearing, is is able to kill you. Whether it's just attachment. Whether it's just wound. Just a wound. Whether you are just plating your hair, you should plate it. Natural hair is part. Whether you are just using powder, just white powder, is enough to kill you. It's a property of the devil. Jesus wanted to be natural. 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 Hear me very well. Open your hair. And hear me, Jesus wants you to be natural. Very quiet. If you are somebody that used to be angry, you are in trouble. If Satan come and find that anger is in you, his property is in you, it's enough to kill you physically. It's enough to take you to hell. Uh, sir, but I'm living only life. Only life does not include sin. Only life means complete holiness. You are careful of what you see. You are careful of what you hear. <laughs> Facebook people, please share this. Share this. Share this message, please. You are careful of what you hear, what you say with your mouth. I hear what I'm saying. You are careful of how you do. You are careful of how you move. You are careful of how you wear clothes. You don't just wear clothes anyhow and say, I want to do yanga. Oh, 
if they will come and is able to find this, this property in your life, you are in trouble. That day, the enemy came, the spirit of death came, and he was successfully, he found his property in me. Till now, I didn't know what I do anyway, but I know probably there might be a sin there. And the man, and the spirit of death killed me. He kills me. He kills me. If not for the grace, if not for the time like this, if not for the moment like this, I will not be a dead man. How dare you? You think you can serve God with sin? Let me tell you very well. Don't think that it is only physical sin that is dangerous. There are things we call spiritual sin. What did I say? Spiritual sin. That one too is more dangerous. Hey! Spiritual sin. That one too is more dangerous than ever before. Very, very, very dangerous. This includes your spiritual activities, both in the church. I will explain this to you, accountability. I will come and teach you on that topic. So you will understand that sin does not end in when you are committing sin. Though. There are many things that can cause death. That can cause anger of God. There are many things. Oh, accountability. 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 Ah! Accountability. No matter the kind of pastor that is praying for you, listen to me very well. No matter the kind of prayer you are praying, Lord, I do want to die. Father, no kakatu bili tatata. De kongindia kakonde papaka. Siti ato soto. Mareke konguziala. Mende konde kata. Me kasu tikeria matos ya lata. You begin to speak in tongue. It cannot work. Speaking in tongue cannot take away death from you. Only one thing can do only one thing. Only one thing. Only one thing that can take a week death from you. Do you know what? Should I tell you? The only one thing that can take away the spirit of death from you is only living. Perfect and very perfect only living. That is the only thing that can take away the spirit of death from you. Only living. Perfect living. You are careful with your life. You make sure that you are under the shadow of the Almighty. You make sure that your life is in Christ. Somebody slap you on the way and you say, thank you, sir. That is the kind of life God wants you to live. Not the kind of somebody slap you and you say, you slap me. <laughs> you slap me. You slap me. <laughs> you receive him. Though you did not slap him back, but you start and you go into prayer. As I say, ah, Father, the man that slapped me today, or the lady that slapped me today, let me let him die. Let him die. Die by fire. Die by fire. All those people praying for their enemy to die, they are going to hell. What I say? They are going to hell. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For we raise you not against flesh and what? And blood, but against principalities and power. You are not wrestling against flesh and blood. You are to wrestle against principalities and power. So when it comes to a state that you are wrestling against flesh and blood, then you are in trouble. You are going against the king, the word of God. You are attacking. 
attacking the word of God. You are attacking a human being like you. You are attacking Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ died for all humanity. And the Bible said, he said, he said, it did not want the death of the sinner, but for them to all come to repentance. To what? To repentance. Sin will take you to hell. And let me tell you well, hell is real. Hell is real. Hell is real. If you enter there, let me tell you something. If they put just a goat, you know goat? If they put a goat into hellfire, and the, because when you enter hell, you don't die there. When you enter hellfire, you don't die in hell. You became alive. People does not die in hell. They are living. They became life in hell. So once you enter the place, you are alive. So when if the throw is, you know, goat people used to kill it and they hit it. You can kill a goat and hit it. If they throw a, a goat into air fire, if they throw a, a goat into air fire, hear me very well, a goat into air fire. If you see how that, that goat is passing through pains enough, you will be crying and be begging for that. You will be begging God that God should take away the goat from that place. God to animal. The suffer in hell. Oh my God. The suffer, if you see it, you will die before you enter the place. You will completely die inside you before you even say you want to enter hell. Completely die. Inside, you will completely die inside. Die inside. You are not going to see. Make sure your life is holy. Be careful of what you wear. Be careful of how you walk. Walk is very important. How you walk. It's very important. You don't just walk anyhow and say, hey, ah, but God understand. You don't just walk anyhow and say, God understand. God does not understand anything. Some lady, when they are walking, they will be twisting their bottom. They will be walking, they will be twisting it. Purposely for men to see it. If men through you commit sin, eh? if men through you fall, you are in trouble. You are what? You are in trouble. If men through you fall, when the spirit of death came to me, it is by grace that I am alive now. I just sat and I said, no, I cannot die. Go to my YouTube channel. You will see many of my testimony there. I spoke, I spoke about, I go deep than this in, 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 my, in, my, in my testimony in YouTube. I go deep than this. Go there, go and look at it. Go and watch it. You will see it there. The Lord God will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray you and I will not go to hell in Jesus' name. I'm going to give time for question and answer. This is El, uh, Heaven and Hell Life program we used to do by 9 a.m. every day to 10, to 10 a.m. This is after 10. I don't want us to go more than this. So I'm going to give time for a uh, question and answer. If you have any question and answer, you can simply open your camera. Let everybody open their camera. You can open your camera. We are, we are talking, we are, this is Zoom. For those who are watching us in Facebook, this is, we are in Zoom. Let everybody open their camera. Yeah. If you have a question you want to ask, you can kindly ask in one minute. Then I run up the program. Any questions? No questions. 
The Lord God bless God bless in God bless us all in the mighty name of Jesus. Now it is Amen. telling us to live Amen. A life in Jesus' name. The Amen. Lord in, in Jesus' name. Every and every life program we are watching it right now. My name is Apostle Daniel from Nigeria. Go to my for you that you have not uh you have not sus- subscribed to my YouTube. Go there and subscribe. Go to my YouTube, go and press Apple to Peter Daniel in YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go and press Apple to Peter Daniel in my YouTube channel and subscribe there. I pray that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I hear. I want to pray for you all. Put your right hand on your chest. Your right hand on your chest. I want to pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, Amen. for those who are listening to me and watching me right now, that you have mercy upon their soul. Everything they have committed, you will forgive them. You will wash them clean. You will perfect their life. You will make their life holy and perfect in the name of Jesus. God bless you all. God bless you. Don't forget to come to uh, the Zoom by 9 p.m. in the night. Don't come late, please. 9 p.m. is just very, very powerful. The deliverance hour we used to do by 9 p.m. And don't forget what, uh, uh, don't forget uh, that today is the time you're supposed to uh, pay your offerings and tithe. So you can pray your offering to my 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 destiny and send it to me. The Lord God will bless you in the mighty name. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Tomorrow, Amen. I make you good night. We will see ourselves. God bless you. Bye. Amen.